First it was metal and glass, then it was the curve, and now the hole in the screen. The Note 10 Plus features some minor changes in the front and back, but it's still the S Pen that makes this the best phablet around. Design Samsung manages to preserve the spirit of the Note, without giving up on evolving the design according to mainstream trends. The Note 10 Plus maintains the curves on the sides and the S Pen. The metallic edge is very thin on the sides, almost sharp. But it is not uncomfortable in the hand, and although this is a big smartphone, 6.8-inch screen, it doesn't feel as big as the Huawei Mate 20X or the OnePlus 7 Pro. The upper and lower edges form a right angle with the sides, in the style of some Xperia phones. In this way it manages to differentiate itself from other premium smartphones, such as the Huawei P30 Pro, the Xiaomi Mi 9T Pro, the Galaxy S10 and the Note 9. So, this phablet is thin and compact, it even manages to be more compact than the LG V50, with its 6.4-inch screen, and even the OnePlus 7 Pro, with its 6.7-inch screen. The quality materials that Samsung used give a premium feeling of robustness. Of course, it will still attract fingerprints and smudges like a magnet, and it is rather slippery, thus a case might be a good idea. Finally there is no Bixby button, and the three remaining keys, volume and power, are situated on the left side, but I would prefer them on the right. It is still a heavy device, but it sports a 4300 mAh battery. Display One of the differences between the two notes is the size and resolution of the screen. The Plus version features a 6.8-inch display with a resolution of 3040 by 1440 pixels, while the standard version is equipped with a 6.3-inch screen with a resolution of 2280 by 1080 pixels. However, both of them feature the new Infinity-O screen, with the hole for the selfie camera in the upper center. This is a dynamic AMOLED panel that comes pre-configured with somewhat colder tones and slightly supersaturated colors that most users seem to like. Of course, you can adjust color temperature and white hue according to your liking. We chose the natural mode and maxed out the resolution. The maximum brightness is sufficiently high to make the screen visible outdoors, and although the automatic brightness adjustment is mostly spot on, it reacts a little slow when we move from a brighter to a darker environment. The feature that makes all the difference here is the Infinity O design, with the use of a small hole punch selfie camera which is much more discreet than in other designs. Last but not least, the screen also supports HDR10+. Performance Samsung's real strength is in its components and semiconductors. Perhaps that is why the manufacturer insists on using two processors, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 for the USA and China markets, and the Exynos 9825 for Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Latin America regions. Those who love benchmarks will know that the Exynos lags behind the Qualcomm at the performance level, although in practice there is no difference between them. The Plus version is also equipped with 12GB of RAM, the most we can find in Android phones, although in practice the difference between 8 or 10GB is almost imperceptible. As you would expect, this is enough raw power to do almost anything, from split-screen multitasking to heavy mobile gaming. The only drawback is that the device gets hot after a while. You will notice that the rear begins to warm up while taking photos or gaming, or even after a few minutes of watching videos. Software The Note 10 Plus uses Samsung's One UI in all its splendor. The navigation is quite intuitive via menus and sections. You can also customize the size and distribution of the icons, as well as the pages. S Pen Last year the S Pen made a big leap forward by adding wireless functions that make the Note stand out from the competition. The remote control functions are now more and more specialized, making the Note 10's S Pen somewhat more complete in its use. The new air gestures are quite nice, but you will need some practice before being able to use them effectively. What we found most useful is its function as a camera shutter and multimedia control. Biometrics The Note 10 Plus offers two options, fingerprint unlock and face recognition. The fingerprint scanner is placed under the display and it uses ultrasonic technology, thus differentiating itself from the others. Face recognition on the other hand, offers nothing special, moving away from more advanced and secure options such as Apple's Face ID. Anyhow, it works quite well and it failed to recognize us only in dark environments, or with our sunglasses on. The ultrasonic fingerprint reader is even better. 
it is quite fast and precise, and more secure, and a solid alternative when face recognition fails. Cameras The Note 10 Plus sports an ultra-wide-angle lens, with an 123-degree field, and a 16-megapixel sensor, a wide-angle lens, with dual aperture, and a 12-megapixel sensor, a telephoto lens, with a 12-megapixel sensor, and a 2 times optical zoom, and a depth sensor. It is a configuration very similar to that of the S10 Plus, very versatile and rather satisfactory in most situations. This device feels much more comfortable in macro shots, and it usually produces a good dynamic range, and a slight oversaturation that doesn't ruin the end result. It captures a lot of detail in abundant light, but as soon as the light decreases the sharpness of the photos goes down with it. The HDR is not very aggressive and works great in automatic mode. The 2 times zoom helps get more details when shooting distant elements. The ultra-wide angle is the most interesting one, since it has a truly wide field of view, and the automatic lens correction for distortions makes the photos look natural. In portrait mode, the bokeh effect is great as always. The cropping has improved slightly but remains quite aggressive. The phone is able to distinguish the main object from the background, but the blurring effect is very flat and artificial. The night mode allows for more exposed photos, and is very useful in darker scenes, or when there is hardly any light. The price to pay is more noise and fog, especially in well-lit scenes. Selfie Cam Here the results can vary greatly. With abundant light, the fidelity reaches its peak in terms of colorimetry, detail, and exposure, but the sharpness goes away as soon as we go indoors or the light begins to fade. The HDR maintains its softness and is well-balanced. Portrait mode captures good detail, but the cropping is too aggressive and usually very artificial. The degree of bokeh effect can be adjusted both before taking the photo, and afterwards. Night mode selfies seem somewhat exaggerated. It is a good alternative if you don't like using the flash, it uses the screen's light, but the end result is more artificial and less defined. Video Video quality is more than acceptable, especially if you activate the stabilization. There is some oversaturation by default, and color fidelity is slightly lost, but the sharpness is preserved, especially in 4K resolution. Autonomy The Note 10 Plus uses a 4,300 mAh battery, with an average autonomy between 18 and 24 hours, with around 7 hours of screen time. What helps compensate is the fast charger, which allows you to get a full charge from 0 to 100% in 1 hour and 16 minutes. With about 30 minutes of charging you will arrive at 50%, which is also very good. Audio The stereo sound is of good quality, with a good dynamic range and loud volume, without ending up penalizing the quality. There is no 3.5mm headphone jack, but the supplied AKG and ear headphones use a USB-C connection. Verdict The reason for the existence of the Note has varied over the years and perhaps so has its purpose. Having a big screen isn't reason enough. This is why the Note has been evolving other identifying features, such as the S Pen or the Dex. And they are the real difference between the Note 10 Plus and the S10 Plus. Its other highlight is the audio, which provides added value to a screen that is perhaps the best one on a mobile device.